Good morning. Now this morning um, lesson is um, a combination cooking. What is combination cooking? It's when you use two cooking methods to complete a dish. Um, what could an example be? Um, if you make a macaroni cheese and you boil the macaroni and then you make a cheese sauce and then you combine the macaroni and the cheese sauce together and you put it in a, a dish, serving dish or a takeaway box, whatever the case may be and you finish it off with cheese and you finish it off cooking in the oven the two cooking methods there is boiling and baking now um, we've covered shepherd's pie uh, boiling stewing baking so you've we've covered one type of um, combination cooking the one we're going to cover today is braising why bolognese is a stew um, so spaghetti bolognese is a stew and it um, is um, stewed mince meat turned into a bolognese sauce and boiled spaghetti pasta lasagna is a stew and braising why braising because it's cooked in the liquid and finished off in the oven. So what's the difference between um, shepherd's pie and lasagna? Well, with a shepherd's pie, the potato is dry. So the potato is dry. With a lasagna, it's cooked in pure liquid. It's cooked in the bolognese sauce and the white sauce on top. There is no dry ingredients in a lasagna. <laughs> except for the lasagna sheets. However, when I cook my lasagna, I always pre-boil my lasagna sheets. Not all the way through, but I pre-boil them. So what I will do, I'm gonna demonstrate for you today, um, lasagna. So let's have a look at what I've got on my, on my table. Oh, now you remember, or you maybe, um, I'm about to explain this to you. What we call mise en place is when you must have Excuse me. <coughs> Everything ready before you start to prepare and cook. So to prepare um, is to have all your ingredients and your uh, equipment that you're going to use to prepare. And to cook, once again, you have all your equipment that you need. And then you collect all your ingredients. What a chef must simply do is go in back, forward, back, forward. They must have everything around them that they need to create the dish. So I'm just gonna finish off here some uh, garlic, right? Now, there is gonna be a little twist on my lasagna because I've got some creme fraiche. Um, it's not out of date, but um, I wanna get, I wanna use it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a bechamel sauce, and a bechamel sauce is a milk sauce. So it's flour, roux-based sauce. A roux is um, flour and butter. So a bechamel sauce is a milk-based sauce. Why am I saying that? Because the other type of roux-based roux -based sauce that you may or may not know about is called a velouté. And it's a water or stock-based sauce. So it's the same roux, flour and butter, but instead of adding milk to it, you would add um, a stock, like a vegetable stock, or a fish stock, or a meat stock, or just water to thicken it, yeah? So, bechamel is milk-based, and because it's milk-based, and I've got a little bit of um, creme fraiche, I just wanna get rid of it, right? I'm gonna, um, a little twist on my lasagna. So, I've got my garlic, and my um, onions. Um, okay, if you're doing 100 grams of mince, I would say about 
10 grams of garlic, couple of couple of large cloves, and about 25 grams of onion. That's 100 grams of mince. Yeah, it's not a garlic and mince bolognese. It is a mint and tomato bolognese. So the mince, the volume of the mince must be, or the ratio of the mince must be much more, three times much more, and even more than that, than the actual um, base vegetable. Now, this when I say base vegetable, when I talk about base vegetable, it's a vegetable that I use to um, enhance the flavour. Yeah, um, but it's not the main dish. If I'm making a um, a carrot soup, for argument's sake, I might have a little bit of garlic in there. I might have a little bit of onion in there. I might have a little bit of celery in there. But the main ingredient that will outweigh all the rest of the vegetable must be the carrot. So this, today it is, it's the mince. Yeah. So I've got my garlic and my onion. Let's go over here. And, right, so I said mise en place, did I not? Right, and mise en place is to make sure everything is ready. Right, mise en place also means that I've got my, when I cook my lasagna leaves, I want to cook it for about two or three minutes, but I've got some cold water. So I take it out of the hot boiling water and I'll drop it into cold water and cool it down. Yeah. So, mise en place, yeah? I've got my oil. Right, I'm going to put a little bit in there. And then I can add my onions. And then I'm going to add my garlic. I do have um, some dried herbs that I'm going to use later. Use fresh herbs when you can. And a very good herb to use, that I like to use with tomato, is basil. Tomato and basil go really good together. And it really, really um, makes the, um, the, the bolognese sauce a very pleasant taste. However, I've got some dried oregano, and oregano is what you get on pizzas and stuff like that, and that's also got a, a nice Mediterranean type flavour to it, so yay, that's what I'm going to use. So, I'm starting to slowly fry that off. Now, um, what I need to do now is I need to um, get my flour and my butter together for my bechamel sauce. Yeah? So that's cooking away slowly. Uh, I don't need to, to worry about that. Let me get my stuff ready now for my bechamel sauce. Yeah? Right, so um, to do the bechamel sauce, I've got 50 grams of butter. I'm going to melt the butter first. 50 grams of butter. And then I've got 50 grams of flour. Once the butter is melt, then I'm going to um, put the flour in there. Then I've got about 200 grams of, uh, 200 millilitres of milk. It's normally 60 grams of butter, about 500 millilitres of milk, but I'm going to add the creme fraiche. So, now when you're making a roux base sauce, you want to add the flour and you want to absorb all the fat from the, fat, from the, from the butter into the flour and then you start adding cold milk. So, and notice I use the white chopping board because the white top of wood is for dairy and the brown one is for vegetables. Right, so... Let's take a 
Almost there. Yeah. In this game as well, you find that you have to start doing some multitasking. You're trying to do two jobs at once and get good results. So I'm absorbing the flour, the fat, sorry, with the flour. So we've got this texture here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add 200 millilitres of milk. And it's going to turn it into a roux. Slowly. When making a roux, you, do, you want to do it slowly. You don't want to rush it. You want it to be done slowly. Right, as you can see, what's happening now, it's a bit like... It goes all clumpy like that. Yeah? Then you know you're on the right track. Then I can add the rest of my milk. And then I can start to add my creme fresh. I was going to mix it all in. very rich bechamel sauce. Now, because it's a lasagna, it's going to be a cheese sauce. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn this bechamel sauce into a cheese sauce. Alright? So, I'm going to add the rest of the creme fraiche to it now. some cheese and some mustard and that will be then called a mornay. Alright, so I've got a nice consistency here. It's thick but it's workable so I'm going to leave that to the heat through. Got great consistency here. Yeah? Excellent consistency. Then I can concentrate on the meat. So if I put my finger there, that will help the heat to rise. So I can concentrate on the meat. Right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brown my meat now. Mix the meat through with the garlic and uh, onion. I'm going to mix that through and keep mixing that through until the meat starts to brown. And don't leave the meat, because if you leave the meat, it will clump up. You've got to keep on moving it, and eventually it will start to separate. Right, now, while that's happening, I want to show you something. This is a, a can opener here. Right, so how do we use it? This is the tin of tomato puree. So, you get the, the tin, line it up underneath the can opener, stab it like that, turn it around, and it should open the can. Right, if the can is a bit bent or something like that, it will have difficulties. But here we go. So we've got our tomato puree all ready to hand. So we've got tomato puree, leave it on the fire, browning off. And I've got my beef stock that I'm going to add later on. Um, yay, that's it. 
sprinkling some more cheese on the top. So 50 grams of cheese into the sauce. And then 50 grams on top, just, just to decorate it. And then a very, very, very nice, silky smooth, nice consistency Cheese sauce, really nice. Right, now concentrate on the meat. Get it all browned off. Turn this up a little bit. Once it's all browned off, I'm going to add uh, a litre of I'm not going to add any, um, I'm not going to add any, um, I'm not going to add any tomato puree. When I do add a tomato puree, it would be about 25 grams of tomato puree, 50 grams of tomato puree in fact, and about 10 grams of sugar just to take off that sourness, okay? Right, I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons, dessert spoon, of this stock. Right, I'm not going to add any salt to it. This is going to be the salt. So, about 33 cubes, 3 oxide cubes. Ah, but then, if you're doing it with 100 grams, 1 oxide cube. So I've got about, maybe... 400 grams here. Four, about, I've got about 500 grams of meat here. Right. Now, last week, if you remember rightfully, when I, when I reach this stage, all I do is add the water and then I let it simmer for about 40 minutes. That way it comes soft and tender. If I add my tomato puree now, it's going to thicken the sauce. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it stew. And then let it come reduce. Then I'll add the tomato puree and the sugar. So here we go. That's the stock. Let that come to the boil. And then let it reduce. And that will be the demonstration for the preparation part of it. Then there will be the finishing and the cooking part of it. So that'll take 40 minutes to cook. Okay, have a go for yourself, yeah? Cheers. <laughs> 